Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Jasper and I'm Slightly Abnormal. What I want to talk about today is what it's like being a disability studies student. What I want to talk about today is what it's like being a disabled student taking disability studies in college. Now, this is like only my experience with my particular school, so take everything I say with a grain of salt. Every every school is going to be different. Every every person's experience is going to be different. But I thought it would be interesting to share anyway. Now, I already have an art degree, but I decided to go back to school for several reasons. Um, one is that I'm disabled and I know that the disability field needs more people who are actually disabled in it because we actually know what it's like. And the other reason is that I briefly considered getting an art therapy degree, but that was really, really, really expensive. And so my friend suggested that I look into disability studies instead because this way I can still maybe use my my art degree um, to help people but be slightly less than that just a little. I found it pretty easy to get in but again I already have a degree and I do really well in school so I'm not sure what it would be like um, for someone just out of high school or somebody who struggles more in academic settings. So like, I only take three courses a semester because I found that more than that is just way too overwhelming for me. I've tried taking four courses or five courses, um, but I become instantly overwhelmed and it's just too much. So I found it's better for me if I take slightly fewer courses, but I take a little bit longer to graduate. So I'm in a two year program, That's, but I'm like, it's going to take me two and a half years, which is fine. Because like, what am I going to do? Graduate and then find a job? Sure. The coursework is challenging, but it doesn't really compare to the university level classes that I took in my old school. Even th back, back then, even when I was only taking three courses a semester, the workload was absurd. Whereas at this school, I can take three courses and I can like also rest when I need to and like, you know, take care of myself and have some sort of balance in my life so that's actually kind of nice the teachers are overall pretty nice um they're understanding as long as you you know talk to them as far as i know none of my teachers are disabled although some of them have disabled family members so take that how you will um as far as I know, none of the administration staff or the people in charge of writing the courses are disabled either, although that's harder for me to know because like, I, I don't interact with those people as much. I was going to talk about the physical accessibility of the campus buildings and stuff, but none of that matters anymore because almost everyone is doing their coursework online. So other accessibility things. You can only get accommodations if you have an official diagnosis. I know some people who have taken advantage of that and they've found it really helpful. Um, but for me, I don't have any official diagnosis for anything and I can't afford to get one because that costs thousands of dollars so I just had to muddle along as best as I could. Um, some of my courses 
You aren't allowed to miss more than a set number of classes. I think it's about three or you automatically fail. And for me, that is terrifying because I have unpredictable health issues. So I have no idea when I'm going to feel up to going to class and when I'm going to need to stay home and cry in bed. And honestly, the switch to online classes has made things so much more accessible to me because I can go to class while I'm at home crying in bed. Um, and so I've actually missed fewer classes now that things are online than I did back when I had to go to the school in person. And, you know, I no longer have to spend hours in transit just to sit for more hours in an uncomfortable chair in a fluorescent lit box. Most of the textbooks, especially in the first year, were written in the 90s to the early 2000s. And they weren't written by disabled people. While they're still informative, I know the disability studies field has progressed a lot since the 90s. And it's weird that even some of the articles that we had to read in first year were at least five years old. The disability advocates that I follow online definitely don't agree with some of the language and some of the stuff that were put across in some of the articles and the text that we had to read. And not having disabled voices even present in the basic course material is a major problem, and it should be obvious. How can you say that it's best to listen to disabled people on one hand, while on the other hand only using non-disabled experts for your required readings? There is a huge difference between what an outsider sees of somebody versus a person's lived experience. One of my teachers brought in a guest speaker the other week um, who's disabled and she got to talk about her advocacy work and just like her personal journey and like what she's doing with her life and stuff. And the reaction that she got from my classmates was amazing. They were blown away. And it's like, we're in our last semester of second year in this two year program. And these people are acting like they've never heard this story before. It's not an uncommon story in the field. But somehow only this teacher thought it was worth bringing somebody in who actually had lived experience and who could talk about their life. Also, there was so much emphasis on person first language, which is where you say a person with a disability instead of a disabled person, because that's supposed to help you rem remind you that disabled people are actually people. The entire first semester was entirely, it felt almost entirely, just about how everyone should use person-first language. Um, and that was really frustrating because in a lot of ways we were actually taught that it's best to listen to the people that we're trying to help. But when it comes to language, it is always person first language. Period. End of sentence. And there's a huge amount of disabled advocates that hate person first language. It's not even a new issue. And like they've been fighting this for years, but it didn't come up. I was the only one who brought it up and that was really annoying really, really annoying. I'm going to do a whole video on person first language and like the history of it and why it's problematic because there's a lot, but I thought it was worth mentioning here. One of my teachers doesn't even say person with a disability. She says person with an exceptionality because apparently even the word disability is too icky which is 
fucking ridiculous because no one outside the disability field will even know what she is talking about. I didn't hear the term person with a exceptionality or people with exceptional needs until I got into the disability studies program. I... And honestly, even though she's super nice and one of my favorite teachers, saying that disabled people are exceptional is pretty close to saying we're special. My disability doesn't give me superpowers, Karen. And using euphemisms to make yourself feel better isn't going to reduce any of the barriers that I face. Another language point. Most of the time when they talked about supporting people, it was them. We, the non-disabled support workers, are supporting them. Implying that there are no disabled people in the program or in the work that everyone in class doesn't have a disability, even though they knew. Like, I don't even think they were really aware. And it was... I don't think they were aware of what they were saying and what it implied. But they still said it. And it was still kind of gross. And this was particularly hard when they started talking about people um, with mental illness or behaviors. See myself in the case studies. When I'm struggling more, I do need support to help keep me safe. And to hear it, to hear myself talked about as other, as a case study, as somebody whose behaviors need to be picked apart in order to be understood, it's just, it was so alienating and othering and gross. And again, it was just case studies. I don't remember if they brought anyone in to talk about, hey, this is what it's like to be the person that we're talking about. Which would have helped humanize the whole thing. And it was even harder because at the time I was taking all of the behavior support and mental health classes, I was struggling with my mental health. And so I was trying to take care of myself and help get myself out of a bad spot while at the same time being alienated by the classwork and the assumptions in the language that I was hearing at school. And that just kind of sucks. In general, I would say I have had good experiences in this program. I have learned a lot. And one of my practicums offered me a summer job. And it was one of the best jobs that I've ever had. And I do actually still miss the people that I worked with there quite a bit. And I hope they're doing okay. I've also found resources that I never would have found otherwise. However, if you're disabled and you're looking at getting into a program like this, I would ask yourself how much you think you can handle because it can be really othering and alienating um, and that's hard to deal with. Depending on how up to date they are on different topics, you may have to learn things that you don't agree with, like ABA or other gross things. Um, it can be triggering, and it's honestly just a lot of work. Uh, colleges are really not designed for disabled people in general. There seems to be this assumption that you can just work forever 
and do like 50 hours of homework a week while also working a full-time job and doing an unpaid practicum and all of that. So like, it's a lot. But I also think it's important that we have more disabled voices in disability studies because that's the only way things are going to change. Um, and that was another reason that I wanted to get into this program is to see if I could create change and be the squeaky wheel who's like, hey, why don't we have more disabled voices in our textbooks? And I actually brought that up to one of my teachers and I'm really hoping that it's going to be different for the students who come after me. So I'm hopeful that, like, I've been able to make the program a better place in a small way, but we'll see. And honestly, after almost three years of being a student again in my 30s, I am really just very tired. Tired and frustrated. What am I going to do? After I graduate, I have applied to go back to school for like four more years. This is great. It's fine. It's fine. In conclusion, I can tell that the school is trying to be inclusive and to have the best program that they can have, but it can still improve in a lot of ways. And while it was somewhat alienating and stressful and occasionally triggering, I'm really glad that I've taken this program. But it might be different for you. <coughs> Anyways, thanks for watching this video. Please like or comment or subscribe because I am a baby, baby, baby channel and I need all the engagement I can get. Also put some links down below for some mental health support um, websites and numbers and chats support things. So check that out if you feel like you need it because you're important. Bye! Thank you.